Good morning, class. Today's lesson is 2.3. Today we're going to multiply tens, hundreds, and thousands. Our essential question, how does understanding place value help you to multiply tens, hundreds, and thousands? Let's unlock the problem. Each car on a train has 200 seats. How many seats are on the train with eight cars? So we're going to find eight times 200. Well, eight times two is 16. 8 times 2 is 16, so I'm going to draw my box. So I'm going to draw 16 boxes. So I've got 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Well, 10 of those right here, you're going to think 10 hundreds is 1,000, right? So I'm going to put a T for 1,000, and then I'm going to have 6 left over, and 6 one hundreds is six hundred. So one thousand plus six hundred is sixteen hundred. So the answer for eight times two hundred is sixteen hundred. So another way is that you can use place value. So eight times two hundred. Well, it equals eight times two hundreds, right? And that is six, eight times two hundreds is sixteen hundreds. And if you think sixteen hundreds is one thousand six hundred, then you're going to know that there are one thousand six hundred seats on the train with eight cars. Other ways. Use a number line. So Bob's sled shop rents four thousand sleds each month. How many sleds does the store rent in six months? So we're going to find six times four thousand and we're gonna use the number line. So with multiplication, like I said, multiplication can be thought of as a repeat addition. So um, you're gonna draw and you're gonna show how you're jumping for the product. So in this case, I'm adding, so every time I jump, it's plus four. So if you're looking at this, we have our basic fact of six times four. So this is my six times four. So I'm jumping each time by four and I'm gonna jump that four six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And each time I jump, I'm adding four. So when I jump once, it's four. Jump twice, four plus four is eight. Jump again, eight plus four is 12. Jump again, four plus um, 12 is 16. Jump again, four plus um, 16 is 20. And jump one last time, four plus 24 is, I'm sorry, four plus, 20 is 24, so six times four is 24, right? Now, I'm doing the same thing, only this time I'm, um, I'm going to add my zero, right? Because so now instead of jumping by um, just plus four, I'm, I'm doing it this way, so I'm still jumping. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm still jumping six times. I'm going to get 240. But each time now, instead of jumping by four, I'm jumping by 40s. So each time I'm jumping, I'm jumping by 40. And I'm jumping again, plus 40. And I'm jumping again, plus 40. Jumping again, plus 40. Jumping again, plus 40. Jumping again, plus 40. Because I'm, I'm uh, doing a repeat addition of 40. In this case, I'm gonna jump by 400s, and I'm, I'm gonna still jump six times, but I'm gonna jump by 400s. So each time I jump, I'm jumping by 400, okay? And when I do that, when I do that, so the first time I get 400, then I'm gonna get 800, then 1200, then 1600, then 2000, then 2400. Okay, and this next one, I'm gonna jump by four thousands. So every time I jump, I'm jumping by four thousand, four plus four thousand. Then when I jump again, I'm gonna get eight thousand. And then when I jump again, I'm gonna get 12,000, then 16, then 20,000, then 24,000. So six times 4,000 is 24,000, 24,000 sleds in six months is the answer to the question. How many sleds does the store rent in six months? Now I want you to look over here really fast and see if you notice a pattern. So when I did six times four, it's 24. When I did six times 40, it's 240. 
So I added a zero here, but notice that the end product has a zero. Six times 400, I added two zeros for the 400, and if you notice, the answer has two zeros added from the original 24. In this problem, I have three zeros because I'm now in the thousands, and over here in the answer, I have three zeros. Interesting. And hopefully you notice that pattern because then you can just start doing it mentally in your head. If you know what six times four is, six times four is 24, I've got three zeros, great. My answer is gonna be 24 with the three zeros. Just kind of a, sorry, there's not like a very good zero. Um, sort of an easy way for you to do the mental math in your head if you don't wanna necessarily do the number line. All right, the next one, the basic fact is three times seven and three times seven is 21. Again, I'm gonna at three times 70, now I'm just adding a zero, so it's 210. Look at this one, three times 700, how many zeros do I add? So I have 21, because three times seven is 21, and then my answer should have two zeros. Three times seven is 21, and in this one, my answer should have how many zeros? One, two, three zeros, because there's three zeros here, two zeros there, one zero there, and that's my basic fact. So my basic fa fact with a zero, eight times five is 40, right? Eight times 50, I've got to add, so I've got my 40, and I've got to add one more zero. Eight times five is 40, and I'm adding two more zeros, one, two. Eight times five is 40, and I'm adding one, two, three zeros, okay? Still follows the same pattern, but remember that original zero is part of the actual basic math fact, okay? So how does the number of zeros in the product of eight and 5,000 compare to the number of zeros in the factors? Explain. Well, there are four zeros in the product and only three zeros in the factors, and that's because there's a zero in the basic fact. Eight times five has the zero, so we kind of talked about that. In this one, there isn't a zero in the, um, in the basic fact, but in this one there is, and that's why there's less zeros in the products than there was over here, or the opposite. There's less zeros on this side than there is on this side, because this side has an extra zero for the basic fact. So use the drawing to find two times 500, okay? Well, two times five is 10, whoops, two times five is 10, and then we have our two zeros, right? So we're gonna add those. So we're gonna get a thousand, and if we look here, we've got um, two, times one, times two, times three, times four, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got two one hundreds. So each of these boxes represents a hundred, right? And we wanted two, um, and we want them in groups of five. So there's one, two, three, four, five groups, and there's two one hundreds in each group. And when you add them up, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is a thousand. So two times five hundred is a thousand. So in this one, we're going to complete the pattern. So my basic fact, three times eight is twenty-four. We're working on our basic facts, right? So if three times eight is twenty-four, if I'm going to add a zero here, three times eight is twenty-four. I've got my one zero. I'm going to add it. Three times eight is twenty-four. Now I have two zeros, one, two. Three times eight is 24. Now I have three zeros, one, two, three. Make sure I get my comments on there. See the pattern? Okay, on this one we have six times two is our base pattern, which is 12. Six times two is 12. I'm gonna add one zero. Six times two is 12. Now I have to have two zeros, because there's two zeros there. Six times two is 12, plus my three zeros, two, three. So that's my answer, six times 2,000 is 12,000. Let's do the next one. This one might be tricky because in our base fact, we have a zero. Four times five is 20. So my base fact is 20. So four times five is 20, plus I'm gonna add my one zero. Four times five is 20, and I've got two zeros, one, two. Four times five is 20, and now I'm gonna add three zeros, one, two, three. I know that one's confusing because you do have a zero in your base fact. All right, let's find these products. Six times 500 is the same thing as saying six times five hundreds, right? So when you multiply six times five hundreds, you're gonna get 30 hundreds, and 30 hundreds is going to be 3,000, okay? Nine times 5,000, so that's saying nine times five thousands, or 45 thousands, because nine times five is 45, 
and 45 thousands looks like that. Okay, so these are the on your owns and you can do whichever way works best for you. For me, I like doing the base fact and then I just like adding my zeros. So I know that seven times six is 42. And then I know I'm gonna have three zeros. One, two, three. I know four times eight is 32 and I'm gonna have one zero. I know that three times five is 15 and I'm gonna add my two zeros. So for me, that's just the easiest way. Um, now on this one, you're gonna use reasoning and math to find the missing factor. So we have 63,000 and we have 9,000. So what times that is gonna give it to me? Well, I know that seven times nine is 63 and there's one, two, three zeros, one, two, three zeros. So my base fact must have been seven times nine. So here I have seven times what equals 56,000. Well, my, my base fact uh, seven times eight is 56. And then I have how many zeros? It looks like three. So one, two, three. So my base fact on, or my, my, my problem on this one should have been seven times 8,000. Looking on this, I have eight times 3,200. I know that eight times four is 32. And I need to add my two zeros here. One, two. All right, number 13, communicate. How does the number of zeros in the product of eight and 5,000 compare to the number of zeros in the factor? Let's explain. Well, there are four zeros in the product, right? Um, and only three zeros in the factors because there's a zero in the base fact, eight times five. So when I, did this, when I do this problem, I get eight times five is 40. And then I'm going to have um, one, two, three, one, two, three. So in the product, I'm gonna have four zeros. Okay, so now I want you to go to math on the spot. Looks like this in your Think Central. I want you to watch that video and I want you to complete this problem. When you are done with that, you're gonna do the problems on Think Central. And um, if you need any help, I will be there for you on the carpet. Good luck.